has just started. They paused rates. Jerome Powell even came out and said that he was going to have rates, they think, down to 4.6% by the end of 2024. The median participant projects that the appropriate level of the federal funds rate will be 4.6% at the end of 2024, 3.6% at the end of 2025, and 2.9% at the end of 2026. He did leave it in there that they would be watching the economy and seeing how that goes. Is this really going to give us a soft landing? See a lot of the bullish people or the people who thought this economy is great are probably cheering and saying this is over everything's gonna go back to great. I just wanna warn you of what could happen if the Fed starts cutting rates too soon because of the political pressure. Let's see how all the markets, including home interest rates are going, the bond market, and much more. The 10-year bond, as they came out and said, this has been dropping. And as you guys have been following our channel, you know that that has been helping interest rates drop. As of uh, Wednesday, the 13th, you can get a loan under 6%, a 30-year fixed loan at 5.714%, paying for one point. A veteran, you can get it down to 5.749, again, paying one point to get it down to that, which is insane. We have not seen below sub-6 rates in a long time. What is that going to do to the housing market? What do you think that's going to do to the housing market? But what I want to talk more about is what is this going to do to our economy? The Fed mentioned... According to this chart, you can see, right, we had the highest and the fastest rate of increases. Yes, somebody watching our channel could say that we're very bearish on the market. I think we're just more awoken to the reality of what the market is. Let's just look at 2019, 2018, when there was steady increases and then all of a sudden something happened. Uh, they got pressure from Trump and then they started slashing the rates almost down to zero. What that caused? That caused us to have a huge demand. You couple that on top of that C word. And all of a sudden, now we had very low supply. The S&P 500, as you can see, it has been on this bull rally for a while. People are, were predicting that the Fed was going to turn around and start cutting rates in 2024. i got to ask you, this Fed pivot, is it really going to help us? Is it going to help us or is it actually going to weaken us? We know when we look at the bond market, that directly correlates with interest rates for a 30-year mortgage. Let's just see what that 1% drop has done or the getting all the way down to 5. 7%. Let's use 400,000 because that is actually the median sales price in the United States at 7.89%. This is before taxes and insurance. We're sitting at $2,900 a month, but let's say you were able to get that rate all the way down to 5.75% and that drops at $600 to $2,334. So there's not a huge change as far as how much you would be able to afford, but that is a substantial amount. I don't think that though, that that's going to drive the demand back into the housing market. The last time that we saw interest rates that, that low, well, according to this Fed chart, the 30 year mortgage right now is right around 7%. According to today's sponsor, 5.7%. Let's jump back to see when it was at 7%. And then we can think about what was the market doing? So the last time it was at 7% was August of 17, 2023. Let's jump back into when you could get a mortgage for under 6%. And the last time we saw that you could get a mortgage under 6% was back in 2022 when the Fed started raising their interest rates. In 2022 of September, you could get a 5.66% interest rate. Let's remember, during that time, buyer demand was still low and builders were still offering incentives. Matter of fact, today, today, builders are still offering a 3 to one buy down. They're offering teaser rates of, hey, come buy this home and we'll get you in at 3.3% uh, or 2.99 or 3.99 for the first year and then it increases from there. I want you to pause this video, put it in the comment below. Are you struggling? Do you see struggles? We wanna know. Share with us different struggles that you're seeing or that you see people in your sphere, whether it's family or friends that they're going through. We do care and we wanna hear. If the builders are still giving away these incentives, buyer demand is still low and the builders are giving the incentives back in September. Some of them were in denial, but a lot of them were dropping their prices still 20, 30, $40,000. I think based off of what we saw back in 2022 when interest rates were still at this rate, home prices are still unaffordable and we still have a lot more of corrections to happen. The problem is, is that there's gonna be some FOMO going on out there. Oh my gosh, interest rates dropped. We gotta get into a house before we miss out on the opportunity. There will be a FOMO, which with that FOMO could be a increase in buyer demand. A huge increase? I don't think there's gonna be a huge increase when we see how the buyer demand was back in September of 2022. That 10-year bond, drops even lower and interest rates drop to sub 5%, sub 4% interest rates, and that happens within a matter of months or in a matter of weeks, then I think we are in for a world of hurt. People can't afford homes today and interest rates dropping, people are gonna jump in and there's gonna be a massive run up in real estate property values. So it's something to be aware of. If there's a massive run up in home property values, but our 
wages are not having a massive run up. We are going to be in a world of hurt. Fed funds rate, they said that they're going to be dropping it by the end of 2024, and then they're going to be dropping again by the end of 2025. But if this Fed fund rate drops, this affects HELOCs, credit cards, car loans, recreational loans, your CD, your high yield interest, savings accounts and checking accounts. If that drops, say goodbye to your savings, high yield savings, or say goodbye to the five, six percent CDs that are now being promotionally offered. You can say kiss goodbye to that and we're going to see potentially another run up in car values. Somebody can go out and buy a car and have a 0% interest rate on it or a 1 or 2% interest rate. Now there's going to be this another flux of people that are going in. I don't think it's going to be a long run. I got to ask you a question. Is your dollar going further today than it was at the beginning of the year? Is your dollar going further today than it was in 2022? If you are like me, it is not going further. Matter of fact, it feels like it's going, it's, it's only has half the purchasing power that it did. For instance, a truck or a car, you could go out and you could buy a very nice used car for around $13,000, $15,000. Now, if you want to buy that same car, you're spending around $20,000. Same as a truck. You could go and get a really nice used truck around $30,000. Now, if you want a used truck, you're still going to be around that forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 mark, depending on the truck and the trim level you get. Let's just talk about Venezuela for a minute. Venezuela, they had a very good economy before Hugo Chavez took over. All of a sudden, they had this hyperinflation start going, and it's been out of control. Back in 2010 is kind of when this all this economic war created this hyperinflation. And now as of 2021, 95% of the population is considered living in poverty based on income. Why? Their dollar does not go nearly as far as it used to before hyperinflation. But if the Fed is going to turn around and start pivoting and everybody's going to start cheerleading, especially those who have been very bullish, and all of a sudden they start going buying, our markets are going to be disruptive. And I don't think they're going to be disruptive in a good way. If all of a sudden that gallon of milk goes from $2 to $4, $4 to $8. That doesn't help anybody because our wages are not keeping up with the inflation. I know some of you are probably cheering, some of you are probably excited that the Fed has pivoted, but I think it's gonna do worse for us. Buckle up guys, because this could be a crazy time coming. According to the Mortgage Bankers Association, they have seen an uptick in refinances by 19% from the previous week and 27% from this same time last year. Obviously the refinances are going to be increasing because they were almost at a dead standstill. Nobody was going out and refinancing because why would you refinance it to a 7.5% interest rate? I just want to give you a couple tips if you bought a house and you're looking at refinancing. See, Tom is a great coach. He can say, okay, if we're taking on a refinance, let's break down your break-even cost. It's going to cost you, let's say, $5,000. And if you refinance, you're going to make that $5,000. It's going to take you two years to make that up in your payments. It's gonna take you three years, it's gonna take you one. What I wanna encourage you guys, if you are looking at refinancing, is one, break down the costs. If a refinance costs you five, ten thousand dollars $10,000, how long is it gonna take you to break even? If it's gonna take you five years to break even, you may wanna reconsider refinancing that house. If it's only gonna take you one year, well then that might be a ticket. That might be the ticket to say, yes, I'm gonna go ahead and jump on a refinance. With all that being said, I just had to bring that up because we saw that the refinances are on a climb, which it makes sense, right? There is a jump and I just wanted you guys to be aware of that. I want you to really, I want you guys to really think about this. Obviously we have no way to manipulate or change what the Fed is doing. If the Fed is pivoting and they are changing fast, there is a good chance that we're going into hyperinflation. And if we go into hyperinflation, you just need to make sure you protect yourself. You also have to see through the fog. You have to see through the veil that everybody could be trying to bring over you. Because if you are overextending yourself and jumping into the housing market and buying a house, if you're not buying it cash and you're buying it finance, you really got to think about what you're doing. The Venezuelan crash, what happened is people could no longer get food. They could no longer get their everyday amenities. And that's what drove them into poverty. It actually said that the kids, the kids in Venezuela on average lost eight pounds per year. I'm not saying, hey, go be a prepper. If you're going to buy a house, you may want to think about, oh, maybe I should learn how to garden. Maybe I should learn how to do this. I don't know. I feel like today my dollar goes very little compared to what it did in 2020, even compared to 2021. Right now, people cannot go and buy their groceries. So many of you guys have commented on our previous videos. I make $110,000. We have no kids. We are struggling to get groceries, pay our rents, and all the other extracurricular activities. So I think it will be a short run. So don't fall for the trap. See through the fog. See through the hype. And make sure you're making a wise decision. Till next time.